Hello everyone, welcome back to Control. Oh my god. AWE is here. Alan Wake expansion? Hell yes. Altered World Event? Hell yes. The connection finally coming together. If you watched my original Control playthrough, you know there are some awesome Alan Wake Easter eggs. I think we're finally getting behind the swirly door in the Ocean View Motel. I, I honestly, can I tell you what I really think is about to happen? Remember the last DLC? That mission in the cave with the dark and the terrible things and we had to use the TV as a light? I feel like that was a test for this entire DLC. Uh, having played Alan Wake, I know light is good, darkness is bad, scary things are in the dark. So, <laughs> this will be fine. I'm not scared at all. Besides, I have cat ears. Isn't that what it's really all about? But before we throw ourselves in darkness, I need a pep talk from my number one. Inform all research staff that any instructional videos are postponed indefinitely. And don't ever touch my work again. <laughs> I was about to say, I don't know if you could hear that, but doc Dr. Darling? Darling is a ghost man now. Or whatever he is. Hello, best friend. I've looked through the docs we found in Dimensional Research. That slide projector is extremely powerful. You were right to shut it down. All right, I guess we did all this, so there's nothing new, huh? All right. Well, I've got a bureau to run. See you soon. Yes, ma'am, Director Faden. Gah! Oh, Emily. Please, Emily. <laughs> Not even as a joke. Oh, uh, she's my favorite. My favorite. If I could just have, a, like, a whole game where Emily talks to me, and it was also a dating sim, would that, would that be a possible remedy? Can we just make that happen? Can we make that happen? All right, let's do this thing. Director. Darkness engulfed the elevator. There was something there, reaching for her, trying to make her act. It was a distress call. Faden sensed a drowning man, a hunger in the dark. Investigation sector. Investigation sector, huh? Uh. We should check this out. <laughs> we are in it. They threw us right in. Do we just get a, oh, a hotline? Ooh! Ooh, I'm back in, baby! Darkness engulfed the elevator. There was something there. A presence. Jesse Faden could hear it. A call. It was faint. Reaching for her from a dark place. Faden was sensitive to visitations. She had them all the time. From her guiding star. And the previous director. She was the perfect receiver. As if she'd been made for this. Faden paused to feel it. The force at play here. It was changing things around her, subtle. Trying to make her act. Faden didn't like that. Her guide felt it too. Polaris didn't flare up in defense as with the hiss. So it wasn't all bad. Not a hostile transmission. It was powerful, but it was coming from far away and made weak because of the distance. It was a distress call. Faden sensed a drowning man, a man desperate to escape. She sensed something else, too. A hunger in the dark, not unlike the hostile resonance, waiting. She knew that desperate acts can have grim consequences. It was this, more than the man's despair, that made her follow the call. The elevator lights went back on. The darkness receded like a memory. There was a new button on the elevator control panel. Investigation sector. Oh, come on now. <laughs> Faden pressed the button. The elevator door slid shut with practice bravado. All right, time out. Mega question. Mega super question. Obviously the implication also was there there was a note on the ground there, right? Am I crazy? Did you see the note that was there during the previous scene? Or was that what I just picked up? Uh, it was there. 
Was it just what I just picked up? All right, I'm not gonna freak out yet. I'm not gonna get... Okay, I am. Here's my... <laughs> question. Uh, well, first off, if you've never seen Alan Wake, or you don't know what Alan Wake is, uh, and you missed my stream of it, I would suggest deep diving, maybe visit a wiki, buy the game yourself, uh, do whatever makes you happy. It is like a pseudo-horror adventure, but very cool meta-narrative. It has like some really awesome stuff about, uh, you know, the idea that the typewriter is writing the story and coming to life, right? Like things that are created come to life. So my question is, if Alan Wake, oh no, here we go, gang. If Alan Wake is writing about this, is this something that he brought to life? Is Jesse Faden in cat ears in a gold suit not actually a real thing until he made it real? And then what is real? Oh, God, I got to stop. I got to stop. Mm hmm. Investigation sector. Oh, this is. <laughs> this is bad news. Mm, and the lights went back on, and the doors opened. Just like they said they would. Cool. <laughs> cool. Cool. Not terrifying at all. Ooh. Oh, they got me spooked. Hello? Anyone here? Guess not. So this is a sector that was locked off? Or hidden? For what reason? Well, they started me off with an office area, so we're definitely going to find out. Huh. See? <laughs> Mr. Kirkland, here are the latest agents confirmed missing, presumed dead, from the containment breach yesterday. Agent Jonathan Connor... Researcher Ezra Cruz, Agent Caroline Dempsey, Agent Lindsay Malcolm, Agent Charles Murray, Agent Derek Shaw. Letters of condolence will be delivered to you to sign prior to sending to their families. You will be updated as soon as additional confirmations are made. Also, per your request, a network engineer checked how many cases were backed up digitally. Unfortunately, a large number of active investigations were not yet archived, and the only hard copies of reports exist behind the firebreak. They're lost, I'm afraid. <laughs> Not foreboding at all. Mm hmm. So 2017. So this this happened under Director Trench. Seems a lot more crowded than the rest of the bureau. Yeah. Oh boy, this is gonna be one of those lot of reading episodes. <laughs> if that ain't your thing, you might as well skip to the next one. <laughs> This is where they were printing those things? Oh my god, I love this. <laughs> okay, one thing at a time. Per authorization from Mr. Kirkland, internal investigation D0845 was launched into the ethical practices of Dr. Casper Darling, head of research. Despite the accounts of anonymous blank regarding inhumane treatment of a blank currently housed in the bureau, oh, of her brother, I bet. Our official findings regarding this were inconclusive. Numerous obstacles arose during this investigation. The majority of blank sector personnel seemed to be wholly unaware of any such blank contained there. One blank confirmed the blank's codename to be P6. But all files pertaining to that name were inaccessible, being classified under the highest clearance level. Investigators were similarly blocked from entering the blank research wing to interview its staff. The matter was further complicated by the lack of clarity on whether non-human paranatural entities warrant humane treatment. While this investigation cannot address any charges against Dr. Darling, we do recommend an investigation into blank research. So this sector that we're in, the investigation sector, isn't about investigating outside stuff. It's about, it's like internal affairs. Is that what it is? Maybe it's all of the above. Mr. Dennis, 
or de nice. <laughs> so, so dumb. Uh, a request came through recently from an FBI agent asking for all our files on Bright Falls, specifically the disappearance of the author, Alan Wake. Per the Interagency Information Exchange Agreement, I had some paper pushers gather up a folder of all the pre-approved files. Not to worry, all the inappropriate material is either missing or redacted. But I'm writing to let you know that we received this request from a special agent named Alex Casey. Ooh, sound familiar, right? That's because Alex Casey is the name of the fictional detective in those hard-boiled crime books Alan Wake wrote. Pretty interesting that an FBI agent sharing a name with the most famous character Wake wrote is looking into a case dealing with the writer's fiction coming true. Yes, it is, actually. I think this is worth looking into, but what's your opinion? Just give the word and I'll start surveillance on this guy. Special Investigator Gleason. So the, the conceit here is that the FBI does know the FBC exists? Or whatever the FBC's cover is, exists? Damn, they're like, have some lore. Also, window. <laughs> I became a bird and flew into a window there. Okay, we got stuff up there. Was that a thing that I just... No. Whoa. All right, Polaris, I'll make my way. There's so much to read. Burrow Tractor. AI-82KE. Note. Miscommunication led to a local coroner examining the body of William Burrow. Burrow, William, male Caucasian. Case summary, 33-year-old man found dead on his property per police report. Remains obtained for the coroner's office also include blood, urine, bile, stomach contents, and bone fragments. Autopsy findings, blunt force injuries head, lacerations left ear cheek, blunt force injuries extremities, Dislocation, right knee. Complete avulsion of the right upper extremity with associated fracture of the proximal right humerus. Is avulsion, what is that? Like, it was ripped out? Extensive trauma, abdominal region, complete avulsion of multiple organs. It definitely has to be ripped out, right? Including stomach, heart, liver, pancreas, kidneys, and portions of the large and small intestine all missing from the scene. Yes, okay, that is what that word means, I think. Conclusion. It is my opinion that Mr. Burrow's death is not the result of a mechanical accident as claimed by the authorities. The removal of organs is consistent with animal attack. How does that figure into this? Oh boy, they got my ass worried now. How does that figure in? Mm -mm. I kind of want to go up there above too. But there's stairs. You know what? I call Jesse a bird, so it's time to fly. Hey! Oh, a helmet? A space helmet? Who's, whose office was this? I swear, if I find a note that's like Agent John Glenn, I don't, I don't, I don't know what's about to happen. Shaded facet. Who's? You know, we gotta check this way, just to be sure there ain't nothing we missing. By being a big goof, of course. Oh my goodness. Cauldron Lake, okay, so this is Alan Wake. To Chief Investigator Dennis. It happened again, third time this year. Something certainly has it out for our blank. Could be raccoons, the locals certainly complain about them enough, but why the hell would raccoons keep going after a monitoring station? Doesn't add up. Anyway, I've got the Bureau of Tech going around the site next week to take a look. Next in the list of recurring problems is the staff at the Lake House Research Station. How am I supposed to effectively keep an eye on Blank Lake if they won't let me see any data? Hell, I don't even know what they're researching out there. We need to petition them again to share their info with investigation agents. It's only a matter of time before this Blank hits the fan again and I want to be prepared. Anyway. If anyone at HQ asks why Bright Falls report is a little thin this month, tell them it's because we couldn't take any readings. In the meantime, I might investigate some raccoon traps. Agent Estevez. Whoa-oh. Hold the phone. Assets. Ah, oh, that was the... I got, ju I got jukebox tokens and this. Putting pieces together. 
It's probably not the most exciting visually. I mean, this game is beautiful. Don't get me wrong. But you know what I mean. I'm reading a lot of stuff, but this is my jam. I love this game for this reason. They're like, have all the lore. Uh-oh, Underhill background. Dr. Rhea Underhill. Ooh, this is... Okay, I like this. Dr. Rhea Underhill is a professor at the University of Woodrow in the United Kingdom, where she teaches biology with a focus on botany. Dr. Underhill once worked with the Bureau as a parabotanist stationed in the research sector of the oldest house. She served with no incidents or demerits and is praised by those who formerly worked with her, including Dr. Darling. Dr. Underhill has no known connections to paracriminal organizations or any record of... Time out. Paracriminal organizations?! Oh my god. This can't be the last DLC. I demand a control too with paracriminal organizations. Come on now! Anyway, she's been pretty good and has no record of breaching her NDA since leaving the Bureau. Her civilian behavior has been ideal with the exception of an ongoing personal relationship with Dr. Darling that appears to have begun during their time as co-workers in the research sector and revisited intermittently ever since. Did I know about that? And how does that work now that he's like, beyond time? I mean, I guess it's pretty bad for scheduling dates. Anyway, <laughs> depending on the duration of her work at the oldest house, it may be required to have both parties sign a relationship clearance form. This investigation has found no compelling reason to deny Dr. Darling's request to offer Dr. Underhill an interim position with the aim of finding a solution to the mold threshold issue. So now the- oh, I was about to say this thing can get together, but that's gonna be awkward. My boyfriend, I think, is a ghost man? Per authorization from Mr. Kirkland, Blank was launched into the Blank of Director Zachariah Trench. A recent change in Blank witnessed in Director Trench, including aggressive Blank when Blank with other staff has been observed. However, this investigation is aimed at interpreting the issue rather than proving it. Notable Blank tension between Director Trench and Dr. Darling has been witnessed by numerous Bureau staff, although both declined to meet for an interview on the matter. Witness accounts suggest their arguments center around the Dimensional Research Wing and the Blank kept inside. However, no evidence exists to confirm Dr. Trench's blank as anything more than interpersonal disagreements. This investigation has concluded that Dr. Trench's behavior is not indicative of any blank and that his fitness to lead is not in question. Well, they were wrong. So I guess these guys are kind of like investigating the actual bureau itself then. Trench, official warning. Kirkland, I am growing tired of your blatant attempts to lay your incompetence at my doorstep. I know you want this to be true, but you are head of investigations. This failure is your responsibility. What did you think would happen? Hiding a dangerous specimen in investigations. The containment sector exists for a reason. They are better trained and better equipped for this type of work. In fact, they have admirably taken on certain AWE monitoring responsibilities that your staff are no longer capable of. This happens more and more now. And don't think your petty internal investigations have gone past my notice. You are a worm. Everything I've done has been for the benefit of the Bureau. The Prime Candidate Program only failed because of Darling. You are both failures plotting against me. You are traitors, but the truth will emerge out of you. You are choosing to become my enemy, Kirkland. You don't want to be. Zachariah Trench, director of the Federal Bureau of Control. All right, and there's nothing I can click on like, hello, this is director Kirkland and shit has gone to shit. Hmm, this map. CPB? CB? CB? 1988, 1994, 2006. Hmm. I mean, that's a new art asset. What am I missing? What am I missing? Staffing issue. Mr. Dennis. So, yes, there's an increase in AWE cases, and yes, it would be a good idea to put together a special task force to examine exactly why that is. However, it seems that a tiny detail has slipped through the cracks. We don't have the damn staff. 
If you expect us to detect, investigate, and process more AWE cases, you need to give us more people. It's simple math. Between the staff we lost in the Hartman thing and the ones who left for other departments after Kirkland quit, we barely managed to keep up with the workload. Hell, just filing the paperwork for all the altered items we left behind in the sector have been an ordeal. Another thing, this is going to sound paradoxical, but we have an overcrowding situation. This lobby isn't meant to accommodate the whole sector's worth of staff. We put forward a motion to move investigations to a more suitable location months ago. It better not still be sitting at a desk. The people who are getting restless and Kirkland's interim replacement, it's your job to handle it. Best regards, Agent Grayson. <laughs> that thing flipped back up like, you've read the note, my work here is done. Mm -hmm. So we got this. Resignation letter. To whom it may concern, 2019. Wow. It is with great anger and regret that I tender my resignation as head of investigations of the Federal Bureau of Control. This happened right before we rolled up. I do this in protest of the rampant disregard for my department's blank. My staff cannot continue to work under these conditions. Previous requests and warnings have fallen on deaf ears, so I must now rely on my actions to speak louder than my words ever could. I blame this situation on our Director Trench, who has routinely ignored my request for assistance in reclaiming the parts of the investigation sector lost to the blank loose inside. Oh, cool. <laughs> oh, cool. I will never forget the screams of the brave agents begging for us to open the fire break. I will carry that shame for the rest of my days. Oh boy, the blank has failed his agents. I shall never forgive him for that. Sincerely, William Kirkland. Wow. Well, I was worried before, but now I'm terrified. <laughs> but in like a fun way. In a fun, I'm still gonna do it way, but in like a I may scream a bunch way. So this stuff, I mean, come on. I vaporized that box. Wow. <laughs> that box has seen better days. Also, what? Mr. Kirkland, we stopped at Keystone on our way to the target AWE like you asked. I'm sending my report directly to you to try and keep a lid on this Grumman Morales desertion issue. We didn't find any sign of them here. Given their records, it's possible they switched teams like you suspected, but I don't think that's the case. An event definitely occurred here in Keystone, and I think Grumman and Morales got caught up in it. The entire population has vanished into thin air. Reminds me of the ordinary case, but that was just the adults. If I'm remembering the file correctly, this is different. I think our guys are casualties, not traitors. If this was an AWE, it seems to be over. We walked through the whole town, and the only strange signs we noticed were markings on the various buildings. Two overlapping circles with a dot in the shared space. Could be unrelated. I'll show you the pictures when I get back. In the meantime, you should send a team out here to cordon this place off, and maybe get the comms guys working on a cover story? Sincerely, Agent Keenum. Alright, well let me destroy this, because it's... It made all the it made all those papers go crazy. And well, I just can't have crazy in this sector. Also, now they got me thinking like, should I be checking for walls? This is a thing for sure that's going to relate to that. You know what I mean, like the paintings where walls I can break through. I Sorry, I'm really distracted cuz I'm trying to think what that circle symbol could be. Is it the former? I I I'm trying to imagine is it a circle and then another circle in that circle then a dot? Or is it a Venn diagram? I guess I don't, I can't picture exactly what it is. Okay, let's go up. So this is the power for downstairs, obviously. And one, two, that's it, huh? All right, talk to me, talk to me weird stuff. What is this? For chem, whoop, <laughs> it's gone now. What is it though? Space Force, obviously. Ethics investigation. 
Per authorization from Mr. Kirkland, internal investigation P1429 was launched into the legality of the prime candidate program blank by Federal Bureau of Control. So they definitely knew. All right. So this is why they got shut down for realsies. Since all known sub subjects relevant to the investigation used executive privilege to decline interviews, very little firsthand information was gathered. However, anonymous sources and documentation declassified by Mr. Kirkland both paint an alarmingly clear picture of systemic blank and blank. Blank were brought to the oldest house and placed under blank examination and testing with the aim of appointing one as director upon maturity. This program has produced no successful cases and only resulted in the traumatic blank of paranaturally inclined, I assume, children. Not only is this uh, in breach of the Ash Act, but it flies in the face of basic human decency, I would suppose. This investigation team unequivocally blank the prime candidate program and recommends that it be immediately blank, blank, blank. Tractor procedure. So there, we're going to find a tractor in here. A Frank Elk tractor, olive green, dried blood on the grill when last seen. Item is capable of vocalized responses or growls and unmanned locomotion. Oh, I've been on the ride at Disneyland. Where the tractor attacks you. You know, the cars, right? Where the tractor is like, right? Considered highly aggressive and dangerous. <laughs> but thankfully, to Tomater's there to get me out of the way and he saves me. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen in this game. The item first came to the Bureau's attention after the death of William Burrow, owner of the Burrow Farm outside Trenton, Texas. Local authorities arrived on scene after an employee found the mutilated body of Mr. Burrow beneath his tractor. Police arrived, but were immediately driven away by the tractor. Panned calls for federal authorities were intercepted by Bureau communications staff. A team was dispatched. Upon arrival, the agents approached the item. It responded by growling like a bear. Three agents were injured when they tried to detain the item, which escaped. Aerial searches for the item are ongoing. Speaking to Mrs. Burrow only revealed that she had a domestic altercation with Ms. Burrow earlier in the night of the incident. Whether these events are connected is currently unknown. I mean, emotions, right? Emotions cause stuff like that to happen. They, they're like the spark for AWEs. I, uh, yeah, I don't... <laughs> Now all I can think about is that ride at Disney and how mad I am I can't go to Disney. Uh, all right, let's run down here real quick. Just cause. And then can I do like a hard reach? Yeah. Like, wow. And then we will fly up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jump. Now that gate should open. Yeah. I don't even have to check it. The purpose of internal investigation, X0397, is to examine the containment failure of specimen SI1 that resulted in the deaths of blank agents. An inspection report of the containment equipment three days earlier showed no faults. Investigators suspect human error to be the cause, yet no department has provided any evidence to support this. Technicians were able to recover the researchers' notes on the specimen from the internal network. On the blank of blank, the specimen began displaying a sharp increase in aggressive blank. Cross-referencing that date with various logs, found only two events inconsistent with the sector's daily routine. One, the air filters were changed, and two, an hour prior to the incident, a civilian named Alice Blank entered the sector re What? Regarding an unrelated investigation. Alice Wake? Given their connection to the same AWE case, it is likely that Mrs. Wake's presence is relevant to the specimen's escape and to the blank. Investigation is ongoing. What the what? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, this is a whole bunch of stuff. I'm no detective, but something definitely happened here. Oh no, agreed. I don't think cat ears are going to help us. <laughs> I don't think I think this is we're in trouble.
the blessed organization paracriminal i love that we're back on this i don't know how it's going to play a role in any of this probably not but the map upstairs the map upstairs whoa the map oh this group individual has operated outside the bureau's notice for decades perhaps longer displaying a level of skill and caution rarely seen in paracriminal groups a review of past cases has found various mentions of their activities over the years in 2016 a production company called blessed pictures was connected to an altered item case as well as the death of an agent from exposure to illicit paranatural materials in 1994, a Los Angeles-based public speaker named Chester Bless was involved in the illegal use of an altered item. In 1988, a business called Blessed Repair and Service was suspected of involvement in object power case, perhaps even creating it. None of these businesses or individuals have ever been located. However, their connection to appearances of altered items and objects of powers is too direct to be considered circumstantial. An arrest order has been issued for any persons believed to be involved with the blessed organization. Wow. That's so, that's a setup for like future content. I don't know what that future content is going to be, but I hardly doubt that's going to be related to this, right? I don't think so, but. Oh, I am thrilled. Oh, I'm so thrilled. All right. Two. <laughs> I can't believe we're doing this. Do we know each other? I feel... This feels familiar. Yeah, he's behind that door. I can't seem to... I, I've forgotten that. I'm sorry. I'm... My name is Alan Wake. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. friend Tom. Tom Zane. There's nothing to worry about. Tom. The poet. The diver. You, you look different. That was just a, a role. A character. The protagonist I played in my, my old film. I'm a filmmaker. An auteur like yourself. We're working on this together, remember? An artistic collaboration. You need a drink. Whoa! <laughs> oh my god! That was an experience. What the hell was that? was that? Alan Wake, the writer who went missing in that AWE case I read about. Did you see that? What's he doing here? Was there shit running across the floor? What the? And what? Thomas Zane was with him. The poet. No, wait. D -d he was a filmmaker. I, I always remember that wrong. So we can't go in the copyright room. This is a thing. Oh boy. This hotel is bad news. 
Janitor is out. Can I go out here? What the hell? Is that a stru- Ooh, God, that was my own shadow. Oh, man. Yeah, so this has to be the inside, right? Yeah, so that's the reflection of the inside. But where? One day, I'm going to figure this out. There's a ladder outside. Huh. I can't go in any of these. Alright, I'm going to assume... I'm going to assume this is locked. Right? Yes. So, we need to three times this. Uh, what? Well, this is a first. What? Nope. Okay, good. Woo, they had me worried. I thought we were about to go to Threshold Town. Mm -mm. So maybe it's as simple as turning off all the electricity and then pressing it again. Ooh, ooh. Oh, the key. Y'all hear that? Y'all hear that, like, definite noise of a key entering a keyhole? Dr. Emil Hartman, devoured by hungry darkness, became the thing that had been Hartman. Broke loose, killed everyone it could, lurking, roaming, waiting. Then something else came, a resonance. The thing that had been Hartman went through another change. Oh no. Oh no. So there's like a terrible monster that is now a hiss controlled terrible monster. Well, that's most of this game. But also. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I'm waiting for the turn. This is so far, it's been your standard control procedures. But I'm worried. <laughs> I'm not so sure we should have done that. You know, where's the payoff? Bring the strippers and boots! We do occasionally talk about video games. Bring the strippers and boots! I love that time of video games. Bring the strippers and boots! Oh, thank God, I don't need pants now. Hey, JC! What are you doing? Not much. Making a fortune. It's a professional broadcast. Yeah, now sing music. It's a professional broadcast. Bring the strippers and boots! It's a professional broadcast. I'm here to ask and answer one simple question. You got 